If there is one national park that ticks all of the boxes, Yellowstone is it. Established in 1872, it was not only the first national park in the United States, but is widely regarded as the oldest in the world. The park sits atop a supervolcano and was initially created to protect the abundant hydrothermal features that lie within its boundaries. It is home to the world's greatest concentration of geysers and the Grand Prismatic Spring, which gets its color gradient from thermophilic bacteria that flourish towards the water's edge. Nestled in the Rocky Mountains at 8,000 feet above sea level, Yellowstone is the second largest US national park outside of Alaska and boasts arguably the most impressive array of wildlife, including elk and herds of bison and pronghorn. The park also features amphibians such as the western tiger salamander and birds such as the great horned owl. Sitting mostly in the northwest corner of Wyoming, Yellowstone is but a stone's throw away from the state's second national park found to the south. Grand Teton was established in 1929 to protect the Teton Range and several lakes that sit at the foot of the mountains. The Tetons is a smaller range within the Rockies whose highest peak, Grand Teton, rises to almost 14,000 feet. Although the mountain range itself is one of the youngest in North America, having only been uplifting for a mere 10 million years, the rock from which it is formed is some of the oldest in North America, dating back 2.7 billion years. A mixture of metamorphic gneiss and granite produced the spectacular dark grey peaks this range is famous for. The wildlife in Grand Teton is equally stunning, with both grizzly and black bears roaming the forests, alongside moose whose range extends not much further south. There are also 10,000 plus species of insects in this region, such as the swallowtail butterfly, who play an important role in pollination. Another park founded to protect its geological landscapes is Capitol Reef National Park in Utah. The park boundary follows the water pocket fold, a warp in the Earth's crust known as a monocline, which exposes layers of colorful rock that usually run horizontally. Capitol Reef is named so for the combination of white Navajo sandstone peaks that resemble the domes of Capitol buildings and the rocky cliffs which represent a barrier to travel similar to an ocean reef. Another unique feature of this park is a collection of Native American petroglyphs a series of rock engravings showing various characters and the area's animals, which look very similar to the desert bighorn sheep that live in this area. The hot desert ecosystem supports various species of reptile, including the long-nosed leopard lizard and the midget-faded rattlesnake, the only venomous snake in the park. There are also many species of rodent in Capitol Reef, such as the white-tailed antelope squirrel, which are quite small, with an average weight of around 100 grams. Moving southwest to the edge of the Colorado Plateau, Zion National Park is noticeably more luscious than Capitol Reef. Its geography is dominated by several tributaries to the Virgin River that have, over time, eroded through the sandstone layers to create a series of canyons, the largest of which is Zion Canyon itself. Many of the smaller canyons here are referred to as slot canyons, which are much narrower and often take on unique shapes. These rivers also create riparian ecosystems, those found in the transitional zones between aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems that support beautiful green vegetation amid the otherwise rugged sandstone terrain. In combination with the layered rock canyons, Zion has some of the most breathtaking landscapes in the entire park system. These layers of rock are especially interesting when you consider they are part of a geologic formation known as the Grand Staircase. This sequence of sedimentary rock layers runs from Bryce Canyon in the north, through Zion and into Grand Canyon National Park in the south, where it is arguably the most visible. At up to 29 kilometers wide and almost 2 kilometers deep in parts, the Grand Canyon is the largest and grandest of all canyons in the United States. It was formed over millions of years as the Colorado River eroded its way down through the many layers of the Colorado Plateau. But this wonder of the natural world is not the only spectacle of the national park that surrounds it, which is home to five life zones, 1,500 species of plant, and 89 mammalian species. 22 of these species are bats, such as the pallid bat, also known as the desert bat, 
which are tiny, weighing just 17 to 28 grams. One of the largest and most unique reptiles found in the park is the Gila monster, which exhibits pink and black skin. They are found at the far western edge of the park and are one of only two dangerously venomous lizard species in the world. One of the two other national parks located in Arizona, Saguaro is located to the south in the Sonoran Desert. It is named after and was founded to protect America's largest cacti, the giant saguaro. These enormous plants can reach 12 to 18 meters in height with as many as 25 branches or arms and are estimated to live for up to 150 to 200 years. To reproduce, each cactus will sprout flowers on the top of the trunk and the ends of its arms, which are pollinated by species of insect, bats and birds. One bird in particular has a special relationship with this plant. Gila woodpeckers, who are named after the Gila River Basin in Arizona, drill their nests into the trunk which they use to raise their young. These nests are then reused by other species such as the elf owl, the smallest owl in the world, weighing just 35 to 55 grams. Found on the state's eastern border, Petrified Forest National Park also features spectacular rock-layered mountains, this time mixing shades of purple with the brown and red. Surprisingly, these colorful landforms act as a mere backdrop for the park's main feature, a collection of globally significant fossils that the park was founded to protect. Wood can take hundreds of years to decompose, but in the context of natural history, this is an extremely short period of time. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the trunks on display at Petrified Forest were buried fast and deep enough to cut off oxygen, slowing the process of decomposition and allowing the organic material to absorb minerals that over time converted to almost solid quartz. On top of the astounding geology, the park's wildlife is equally mesmerizing, including mammals such as the cotton-tailed rabbit, bobcats, the smallest member of the lynx family, and reptiles such as the colorful collared lizard. The main type of terrain here is referred to as badlands, a term exemplified best 1,200 kilometers northwest in South Dakota. The layers at Badlands National Park were deposited between 28 to 75 million years ago and have eroded away over time to form the landscape we see today. What makes this park drastically different from the ones we have previously discussed is its ecology. Badlands sits in the strip of temperate grassland known as the prairies, which support larger mammals such as the bison. These lands have been historically important to Native American tribes and part of the park is co-managed with the Oglala Lakota tribe. Smaller mammals in the park include the endangered black-footed ferret and prairie dogs who are from the Scuridae family, more commonly known as squirrels. There are several bird of prey species who call the park their home, including the golden eagle and the burrowing owl who live in the burrows dug by the prairie dogs. Badlands is one of two national parks located in South Dakota. Lying to the southeast, Wind Cave National Park also sits in the prairies and features one of the longest and most complex caves in the world, with almost 250 kilometers of known passageways. Because the cave is so large, it is subject to an air pressure system. When the air pressure inside of the cave is higher than it is outside, air is forced out of the cave to equalize the pressure. Conversely, when the air pressure is lower in the cave than it is outside, air is forced in. This process is referred to as cave breathing and creates the wind that the cave is named after. In addition to being one of the longest, Wind Cave is also one of the oldest, with portions of the cave being over 300 million years old. Above ground, the ecology of the area is a little different to Badlands, with forest ecosystems found at higher elevations of the park. This is also the case 400 kilometers due north in North Dakota's Oni National Park. Theodore Roosevelt National Park was established in 1978 and was named after the US president who came to these badlands to hunt bison in 1883, almost exactly 100 years earlier. This experience had such a profound effect on the then 25-year-old budding politician he would return to these lands when in need of solitude and throughout his presidency would be highly influential in the development of national policies supporting the protection of natural resources. 
The Little Missouri River runs through the Badlands here and creates a variety of ecosystems, supporting a tremendous amount of wildlife in an otherwise semi-arid terrain. There are various species of fish found in the park's waters, including the northern pike, along with semi-aquatic mammals such as the beaver. There are many feral horses that enjoy the grasslands here, as well as various species of deer. Located on the edge of the prairies, but in dramatically different terrain, Rocky Mountain is one of the four national parks in Colorado and was founded to protect its high elevation ecosystems. It is one of the highest national parks in the United States, with over 60 of its peaks surpassing 12,000 feet. The park is also a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, featuring 280 species of bird, 66 species of mammal, and a staggering 142 confirmed species of butterfly. Birds include western tanagers, who exhibit sexual dichromatism, a form of sexual dimorphism that sees sexes distinguished by color. Pine grosbeaks also share this trait, with males sporting bright red feathers that extend onto their chest and back. Brown trout are one of the 11 species of fish who navigate the park's waterways alongside greenback cutthroat trout, which is Colorado's state fish. The Colorado columbine is the state flower and is found at both higher and lower elevations. Just under 300 kilometers south, Colorado's Great Sand Dunes National Park also features alpine peaks, but with a highly unusual foreground. The sand dunes here are the tallest in North America standing at 741 feet. The story of their creation is complicated but goes a little something like this. Geologists have found evidence of a giant lake that used to exist on the valley floor. Large amounts of sediment were collected in the lake, which over time receded and eventually dried up. Predominant winds pushed the sand grains from the sediment up against the base of the mountain, and opposing storm winds caused this buildup to peak into the sand dunes we see today. These dunes are home to their very own species of beetle, the Great Sand Dunes Tiger Beetle, as well as mammals such as the kangaroo rat. Another of Colorado's beautiful national parks is Black Canyon of the Gunnison, famous of course for its canyon, but also for boasting some of the darkest skies in North America. The park boundary follows the Gunnison River, which has cut its way through some of the world's oldest rock at nearly two billion years old. The painted wall section of the canyon displays pre-Cambrian rock, a period of the Earth's history that runs from the very beginning until around 540 million years ago. This section exhibits veins of pegmatite, a granite-like igneous rock that forced its way into the cracks as hot magma before cooling slowly to solid form. These cliffs look spectacular at sunset, but what unfolds in the hours that follow is truly awesome. The park service here uses artificial light only when absolutely necessary, producing some of the darkest skies in the United States, so much so that the park was certified as an international dark sky park in 2015. The final park in the state of Colorado, Mesa Verde is one of the most unique in the country. It was established in 1906 by President Theodore Roosevelt to preserve archeological sites built by an ancient Native American culture the ancestral Puebloans, who lived in the area between 550 and 1300 AD. The park contains almost 5,000 archaeological sites, including Cliff Palace, the largest of the park's dwellings, that is thought to have accommodated up to 100 people. In addition to these buildings, there are a series of petroglyphs similar to those at Capitol Reef. Mesa Verde translates to Green Table in Spanish, referring to its position in the transitional zone between the Arab scrubland to the south and the green montane ecosystems of the Rocky Mountains to the north. There is a diverse collection of animals here, including coyotes and mule deer who are quite large, weighing up to 150 kilograms. Sitting at almost the exact same latitude, Mammoth Cave is the only national park in Kentucky and hosts the longest known cave system in the world. A portion of the bedrock in the area is limestone, a type of rock which is soluble even in weakly acidic water. Rainwater, having picked up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, is slightly acidic and over the course of millions of years seeped into and ate away at the bedrock, creating what is known as a solution cave. 
The ecosystems within these caves are perfect for species such as the spotted-tailed salamander, one of the many species of cave salamander. Above ground, the park features rolling hills covered in mixed deciduous and coniferous forests that are home to a wide variety of wildlife. There are 13 confirmed species of bat in the park, four of which live outside of the cave system, including the eastern red bat. Great Smoky Mountains is a sub-range of the Appalachian Mountains, the main mountain range on the east coast, which stretches from Georgia in the south to Maine in the north. They are affectionately referred to as the Smokies, a name that references the smoke effect, which is actually fog, created when plants release VOCs, or volatile organic compounds. This is a normal and natural process that is also responsible for the blue hue that these mountains are famous for. Black bears are common in the forests here, with an estimated 1,500 individuals roaming the park. Bears in this area have been known to double their weight in preparation for the winter, with males weighing up to 600 pounds in the fall. Great Smoky Mountains is the most visited national park in the country, with over three times the number of visitors as Yellowstone, which sits in second place. This beautiful park is located at the south of a physiographic province of the Appalachians named the Blue Ridge Mountains, which contains one other national park. The foundation document for Shenandoah National Park mentions one specific species, the Shenandoah salamander. These unique creatures are found exclusively in the park and measure no more than 10 centimeters in length. The park's temperate climate and seemingly endless expanse of forest play host to some of the East Coast's most impressive wildlife. Aside from larger mammals such as deer and black bears, the park is home to no less than six species of squirrel, including the Eastern Chipmunk, which weighs just 66 to 115 grams, and the Southern Flying Squirrel, which use the membrane between their wrists and ankles to glide between trees. Some of the most beautiful bird species here include the ruby-throated hummingbird and wild turkeys whose male individuals are quite colourful. Named after the gorge it was established to protect, New River Gorge National Park sits in West Virginia in between Great Smoky Mountains and Shenandoah. Like the canyons previously discussed, the gorge here was created over millions of years as the New River slowly eroded the Appalachian Plateau leading to the sandstone and shale cliffs that are exposed today. The forests that line the gorge and surrounding terrain are some of the most diverse on the east coast, with almost 1,400 species of plant identified. This pristine wilderness offers sanctuary to mammals such as the red fox, reptiles such as the colorful eastern box turtle, and birds of prey such as the bald eagle. The New River is also home to a particularly colorful species of fish known as the Candy Data, which is native to the area. On the south side of the Appalachians in South Carolina sits Congaree National Park, which was established to protect the old growth bottomland forest that contains champion trees, a term that refers to the largest trees of a given species. The national park sits on the northern bank of the Congaree River and is prone to flooding, contributing to some of the most biodiverse forest ecosystems in the country. Reptiles include the Eastern Cottonmouth, a semi-aquatic pit viper who prey primarily on small mammals and fish. One of the most beautiful mammals found in the forests here is the star-nosed mole, which is quite small, weighing just 35 to 75 grams, and exhibits 22 pink tentacles on its nose. At around double the size, the belted kingfisher is one of the most striking birds of the region, who prey on the smaller fish in the rivers. Another park that features spectacular bird life sits over 2,000 kilometers southeast in the Caribbean. Virgin Islands National Park protects both tropical marine and terrestrial ecosystems, as well as various colonial cultural heritage sites. It makes up the majority of the island of St. John, which is renowned for its white sand beaches, tropical turquoise waters, and lush green forests. The wildlife in this park is like none previously discussed. The coral reefs here are home to hawksbill sea turtles, who feed primarily on sponges. The 500-some species of fish in these waters include the spotted eagle ray and nurse sharks, which are the most common around St. John. On land, some of the most interesting species of bird include the Antillean crested hummingbird, 
the yellow warbler, which is quite small at 7 to 25 grams, and the official bird of the Virgin Islands, the banana quit. There is only one national park that is arguably more idyllic, located on the other side of the American landmass in the Pacific. The National Park of American Samoa is the fourth smallest at just over 32 square kilometers. It has a similar ecological makeup to the Virgin Islands with coral reef and forest ecosystems, but is home to a vastly different set of species. The forests of the island are home to no less than seven species of skink, including the moth skink, and five species of gecko, including the slender toad gecko. Some of the most colorful birds here include the many-colored fruit dove and the cardinal misomella, a species of honey eater found on many of the South Pacific Islands. The reefs of American Samoa are filled to the brim with interesting aquatic species, including the raccoon butterfly fish and the gracile lizard fish found throughout the Indo-Pacific region. Further out to sea, the Samoan waters are an important breeding ground for humpback whales who can live for 80 to 90 years. American Samoa is located in the Oceanian realm, which you can learn more about in this video, along with two national parks in Hawaii, which you can learn about in part two of this three-part series.